Welcome to our fourth virtual AIS assembly. Today, we've got a couple of things to announce. Firstly, a quick message from Dr. Miner. Then an announcement about the IB Art Exhibition and a video from Habitat for Humanity. An educational video from the Environmental Club and a video from the Activities Office. And lastly, a message from us, Student Council, as well as a short video celebrating the class of 2021. To begin our assembly, we have a short video from our director, Dr. Miner. Hello, high school. Today's message was going to be about with better spring weather um, to be safe and careful out there during spring break. And then it started snowing sideways and it wasn't the message I thought it was going to be. Um, and this really isn't the year you thought you would have either. I wanted to take a minute to say thank you for your sacrifices, uh, managing the changes uh, to the schedule, to the year, everything being up in the air. Um, you've really held together as a peer group. You've come together, you've been resilient, you're connected, um, and you're having a great year anyway, um, in many ways, um, and you're making the best of it. So thank you for that. And I wanted to say thank you for all of those, um, all of you who've been um, being super careful out there. Uh, we've got all these variants that we're dealing with, um, with the COVID-19, and um, it's, it's more concerning, right, the impact. Um, and I wanted to help help you to remember um, to make good choices that affect others. I know it's probably super tempting to not wear masks and to spend time with friends in social groups and situations. And just remember that uh, some of you have vulnerable family members at home um, and the choices that you're making impact others and to just uh, keep safe, um, keep making good decisions, uh, especially over the spring break. Um, and I know it's uh, tempting um, to not do so, but we're just not there yet. Um, the vaccines are not rolling out as quickly. The variants are, um, uh, you know, more difficult and spread more easily. And so it's just a message to, um, to stay safe and make good decisions. I applaud you um, for all of you for doing the, uh, many of you for doing the right thing and reminding those of you who just need to pull back a little bit and remember to be safe. So just a quick message to you and uh, the sun's starting to come out. So things will get better. Next up, we're showcasing a couple of slides with some art from our senior art student, Dasha. Sadly, due to COVID, her art exhibit had to be postponed, but we want to make sure that we recognize her for successfully completing her IB art program and showcase some of her best work within this assembly. Uh, in regards to her exhibition, there'll be some more information available soon, hopefully. And we wish her all the best and congratulations on completing her program. And next up, a video from Habitat for Humanity.
Well, thank you to Habitat for Humanities for their presentation. Next up, we have a video from the Environmental Club on sustainability. As April 22nd approaches, you might start to hear more talk about the environment and you might be encouraged to take part in a series of activities to celebrate Earth Day without really knowing why or the importance of it. With our increasingly busy lives, it is common to forget about the environment and the impact that each individual has on it. Earth Day is a day for all of us to remember the importance of sustainability, a day that reminds us to continue to do the little things that help our environment. Things like turning off the lights, starting conversations about energy, planting trees, or the four R's of sustainability. Refuse, reduce, reuse, and recycle. The first Earth Day was actually started back in 1970 by Senator Gaylord Nelson of Wisconsin in the hopes of bringing more environmental consciousness to the people. This was an extremely successful event as an estimated of 20 million people attended the festivities and it eventually led to green national legislation such as the Clean Air Act and Clean Water Act. So celebrating Earth Day is definitely extremely important and this is how you can celebrate Earth Day this April 22nd from home. You can plant a tree virtually, you can invest in reusable straws, containers and bags in order to reduce your usage of plastic, you could try a plant-based diet for the day, and you can also watch a documentary to inform yourself further in sustainability. Taking one step at a time towards a more sustainable lifestyle is easy for you and makes a huge difference for the environment. Websites like Treehogger offer many pieces of practical advice that can be easily incorporated into your daily routine. In terms of clothing, it's important to consider the brand's consideration of the environment and their production. The website Good On You gives honest and accurate reviews of each brand's contribution. Lastly, keep a lookout for the posters hung up throughout the school on how to properly recycle in Vienna. Buy local. You hear it all the time, but here's why you should actually do it. Buying locally is not only environmentally friendly because you're reducing the amount of shipping for products, it also results in eating seasonal food. So you're actually lowering your own carbon footprint by reducing the amount of energy spent on growing unseasonal fruits and vegetables. And so it's good to know all these things, but many people have troubles getting started when told to buy locally, which is why I'm here to give you my best tips and recommendations. So first I recommend that you shop at smaller streets such as Beringer Strasse in the 18th or Neubergasse in the 7th and visit Vienna's little boutiques that it has to offer instead of shopping at big chain stores. Second, I recommend shopping at Kreislerein. These are typical Viennese small grocery stores and many of these offer low waste to no waste shopping. So you can get anything from flour to locally biologically produced hygiene products such as shampoo and soaps and here are some of my favorites. When it comes to the environment, we are often only told the bad news and everything that is going wrong. And while that is an effective strategy in trying to get people to change their habits or to um, raise awareness, it can be quite depressing. So here we are introducing a new segment, all filled with good news about the environment and positive things that are happening around the world. The first thing that happened, happened quite a few months ago actually, but it's still nevertheless very, very important. And that is that the United States have finally rejoined the Paris Agreement. And while this may seem quite insignificant to some, it really is not. In fact, the United States is the second biggest producer of carbon dioxide in the world. And by and through the Paris Agreement, they are ensuring that an effort to curb overall climate change is made. And this will force them to reduce their overall emissions, something that is obviously very, very positive for the planet and something that is overall great news. And now, if that is not enough for some of you, there is more. 
In fact, Belgian citizens tired of the government neglecting the planet and just not doing anything about climate change have decided that it was time to take matters into their own hands and have filed a lawsuit against their own government, so the Belgian government, with charges of human rights abuse through negligence, so some quite heavy charges. This has been called the biggest um, court case in Belgian legal history, so again, it's quite a big case, and has inspired many other activists all around the world to take, again, take matters into their own hands and go against their governments, go against their local authorities, to try and ensure that change is made, because if they are not making change, we are responsible to do so. And yeah. To close off this video, we wanted to give you an opportunity to put your sustainability to the test by taking the following quiz. This quiz will show you how many Earths would be needed to sustain the lifestyle that you live, and is a good reminder to be more conscious of just how much you consume. We kindly ask you that at the end of this assembly, you go to the link below and see how environmentally friendly you really are. Moreover, if you haven't heard Greta Thunberg's speech at the UN last year, or if you're just a really big fan of Greta in general, we encourage you to listen to the song 1975 by the band 1975. And truly, we know that it may get tiring always hearing about the snowies trying to be more environmentally friendly, but we hope to have given you enough tips and specific things to do today that you can join us in minimizing our footprint, improving our environment, and safeguarding our Earth. Either we choose to go on as our civilization, or we don't. That is as black or white as it gets. Because there are no grey areas when it comes to survival. Next up is a short little presentation from my student council team regarding a project that we've spearheaded over the last couple of weeks in collaboration with Mr. Hilliard and Mr. DeForest. And yeah, just take a second to listen to it and maybe we can come up with something good. Hello, I'm speaking to you today on behalf of the High School Student Council. We have recently launched a art student merchandise contest where any student, elementary, middle or high school, is able to submit their own student-made design. We look forward to seeing your submissions and please take inspiration from our AIS community. Thank you. Of the final candidates, the winner's logo will be printed on various pieces of merchandise for AIS. The finalists will be determined by the AIS community. So the requirements for this artwork submission is you have to have school colors, so at least green, but black and white is optional. Um, the standard school night head logo um, doesn't need to be on it, but it can be included definitely. Um, and it needs to include AISV, AIS Vienna, or the American International School of Vienna somewhere on the design. There's a couple more things I want to add to Selena's points. First of all, avoid any kind of class-specific wording, just because that can be added afterwards and doesn't need to be in the general design. Secondly, any kind of inappropriate motifs or profanity isn't allowed, just because we want to reach as many people as possible. And thirdly, make sure that the work that you hand in is made by you, so we can ensure that the design is made by AIS students for AIS students. To submit any kind of work, just check the bulletin. There is a Google Forms link where you can drop any digital file, or if you're drawing something by hand, just hand it in to Mr. Chow and we'll take it from there. I'm really excited to see what our community comes up with and hope we can make sure that this merchandise is as student-driven and student-appreciated as possible. Thank you, guys. And now, here's a video from Mr. DeForest regarding the Student Athlete Leadership Conference. Hi, everybody. I just wanted to take a minute and recap the Student Athlete Leadership Conference, which happened in February. There were over 100 schools from around the world that participated. Um, five students from our school joined live, so thank you guys. The conference started and ended with a keynote speaker, but in the middle, there were 16 student-led sessions, and one of them was from Lexi Roberts. She had a great presentation. Um, Lots of comments after about it. So I wanted to have her on here and just hear what she thought about it. So welcome, Lexi. Hi. Hi. Hey, so what was it like to be in a session led by other high school students 
And did you learn anything from those sessions? Um, so what I think is that because they were high school students, it was easy to follow along with their thinking and the ideas that were in their presentation because I could relate to them because they were my age and because they were involved in sport as heavily as I was. And mm -hmm. also, not only did I learn some, um, some new content, some things that I had never known before. For example, I learned about sport in Mongolia. I also learned about being a student in school who's a student um, coach. But I also learned some new ideas for any presentations that could follow after this one for the actual presenting. Mm -hmm. For example, um, the girl who did that great presentation about transitioning from an athlete into a student coach. Um, mm -hmm. I really loved the way that she um, really got the audience involved. She wanted a lot of audience input and wanted them to answer questions. And, and this was something that I think I could um, incorporate more into any presentations that may follow in the future. Very cool. And just my last question was, was it different for creating content for a global audience um, rather than just, let's say, a normal assignment that you would for your class? Um, yeah, it definitely was because in this kind of presentation and not a school one, there was more of an importance put on the audience because mm -hmm. in presentations in school, you're just really creating a presentation for one person, the teacher. Whereas in this presentation, I had to reach a wider audience of high school student athletes. And so I had to ensure that my presentation was engaging for high school students and understandable. And also the goals were different. So in a school assignment, um, your goal is to get a good grade, to have your teacher give you a good grade. But in um, this kind of presentation, my goal was to spread information that would hopefully help others and help others be able to combat their anxiety. Um, also something else that did was it allowed me to um, use my research in other areas of school um, because during my research I had to do a lot of research into anxiety and I realized that this just this wouldn't just go into sport, it would also help me in other things in school environment, like taking exams, tests, performances. Mm -hmm. And this is something that school doesn't really address so much, anxiety and how to overcome it. So I think that mm -hmm. this will be beneficial for me. And also another thing um, that taught me that normal assignments don't is how to do a presentation online. This is something that I haven't had to have done before. Cool. Yeah, it's really relatable, right? Whether athlete, athletics or not, you can you can take it anywhere. Mm -hmm. Well, thanks, Xie. And if, if you're out there and you're wondering, hey, why didn't I get involved or when's the next chance? Um, it's coming soon uh, because we've kind of taken the conference idea and made it a whole network um, that will continue throughout the year. And it'll be an online platform where you can go and get content and have your content um, be up there for, for other people around the world. So it's launching soon, and these are the 10 schools that are part of this initial launch. So obviously we're one of them, and there'll be logins coming to you soon, hopefully within a month, where you can get on the site and take a look and feel it out and see if you like it and see if you wanna create content. Um, so if you don't hear from me soon or, or you're really excited um, to get involved, then just uh, write me an email or say hello when you're in the hall and uh, I can get you all hooked up. So. Thanks a lot. Thanks again, Lexi, for being a great ambassador to our school. Thank you. Okay. Bye. We're nearing the end of the school year, which means the graduating class of 2021, well, they're going to graduate. Usually we'd have a lot of activities to look forward to, we, we could spend some time with them, say goodbye. But unfortunately, because of the pandemic, a lot of those activities have been cancelled. But that doesn't mean we still can't have some fun and remember some of their best times at AIS. So, a group of students looked at the archives, collected some footage over the past 14 years, and put together a video of the class of 2021. Enjoy.
Hello, my name is Nina Zalsonka and today I'll be talking about the hashtag MeToo movement and why it developed four years later after the Black Lives Matter movement. assembly for seniors and maybe the last virtual assembly we're nearing the end of this pandemic and the end of the school year let's get through this together check in on your friends and peers and with that we're done thank you for watching bye, bye. bye.